let me ask you all, apart from Sheikh and the speaker, I'm sure they are aware, but let me start asking the audience. What's surah number one? Asar. Surah number two? Three? Four? Five? Six? Seven? Eight? Surah seven? Yeah, I got it. Nine, Tauba. ten, Yunus. Okay, so we need to ponder upon the verses of the Holy Quran. Let us take the Quran seriously. And when I say I am talking to you, I am talking to myself. When I address an audience, when I say this is a message for you, it is a message for me as well. So let us pay heed towards the Holy Quran. Sawa? Sawa. Surah 8. What is Surah number 8? Before an uh, anfal. anfal, chapter eight, verse twenty-two. The verse I quoted earlier. Inna sharr al-dawab inna Allah sumu al-bukmu al-ladina la yaqilu. Indeed, the worst creatures, the worst creatures in the sight of God are who? The deaf and the dumb and the blind. Why? Because they are unable to reflect. Now someone may say, that, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala targeting people with disabilities? Why is God attacking the deaf and the dumb, the blind, people who have disabilities? No, Allah is not attacking people with disabilities. Allah is attacking people who do not use their eyes. Madam Fatima talked about purpose, right? How you use your eyes, very important, very imperative. How you use your nose, what do you listen to? So the worst of creatures in the sight of Allah are those people who do not use their eyes, right? Who do not use their hearing ability, and those people who do not reflect. So what was the subject according to the schedule? I mean, can someone remind me? What was the subject? Can you come unprepared? No, I would not The opportunity. Mind the subject. Yes, it is. Total body and mind nourishment. Exactly. That's the subject. So that's the subject. So Allah says you have to reflect. You have to use your brain. And can you give me an example of someone who reflected but ended up with the wrong solution? Give me an example. There are people. Shaitan. Shaitan, okay. He did reflect, right? Anybody else? What about Omar ibn Sa'ad? Omar ibn Sa'ad, he reflected, but he came up with the wrong solution. He ended up making the wrong conclusion and joined the army of? Yes, he. Yes, he. he was promised that we will give you the kingdom of Ray. So he had to choose kingdom of Ray or heaven. He said, you know, I don't know if heaven exists or not. I'll choose the kingdom of Ray. And he ended up killing the imam. So reflect. Chapter 34. Which surah is chapter 34? Sheikh. No. <laughs> Asant, mashallah. Salu ala nabi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alim. Mashallah. Verse number 46. Qul inna ma a'idhukum bi wahida. An taqumu lillahi mathna wa furada thumma tatafakkaru. This is very interesting. God says I have one advice. You follow this one advice, you will succeed. One advice. God says yes, follow this one nasiha and you will succeed. Which is that nasiha? That you stand for Allah individually and in pairs. No matter you are alone in the house, stand for Allah. Whether you are in public, whether you are socializing, stand for Allah. And then reflect. That means God is saying, I have only one advice, which is reflect, ponder, contemplate, comprehend. So now, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala. That's all. That's a salat for Amir al Mu'minin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. This is Nasihut Tawarih, volume 2, page 142. This is very interesting. That before making a decision, before taking a stance, consult a specialist, and number two, ponder. What does it mean? That means you should seek expertise, right? You should ask people who know more than you. But at the end of the day, you need to make the decision yourself. You need to use your own rational. You need to use your own brain. You need to use your own common sense. Also, there's a concept in Hinduism known as Atma. What does Atma mean? Soul. 
What is soul. That? Atma. It means what? Sorry? Soul. Soul. Atma. Wow. And there is a verse in the Rig Ved. Therefore, if any, if today, this is something you need to understand. Whenever Hindus, you tell them which is the most authentic scripture. It's not the Bhagavad Gita. It's not the Mahabharata. It's not the Ramayana. It is the Vedas. Because Vedas, they believe, is a direct word from God. It is a Shruti, not a Smriti. Shruti means direct word from God. So, okay? Are we all on the same page? Okay. So, in Rig Ved, it says that your reflection, your mind, yourself, your soul, brings everything together. All your body parts need to function the way the soul or the self tells you to function. Therefore, it's important. Surah al chapter... Surah Nur is 24. What's 30? Surah Nur. Asan, Asan, mashallah. Surah Nur, you know, I had a doubt initially because I saw a phone. I was like, did auntie check her phone? <laughs> then I'm like, okay, now I don't see you. Yet the fact that Rufi, they will not contemplate within themselves. So God here is emphasizing on the importance of contemplation. Now, there's a website called The Blissful Mind. The Blissful Mind. They published an article whereby they said there are 25 ways to nourish your mind body and soul. I'll not mention all 25, right? You want to go for swimming, right? I want to go use my, you know, I want to go have some rest, or I might go swimming. We'll see. 25 ways. <laughs> you need to think about it. You need to think about it. You need to nourish my mind and body. <laughs> 25 ways. So I mentioned how many? Ah, uh, maybe. Four. 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 Number one, sleep knowledge. Make them fine. Make them fine? Thank you, Sister It's only me to them for. No, seniors have to speak. Mention five, <laughs> and then the juniors speak. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa al. Senior not in age, in stature. Okay. How many of you hear of one of Theodore Roosevelt? Who is Theodore Roosevelt? Ex-US president. Ex-US president. The second best president after Donald Trump. <laughs> okay? So Theodore Roosevelt, and I'm, okay, Theodore Roosevelt, I don't say, I don't say more. Theodore Roosevelt, when he died, the staff members came, they came to collect his dead body. Underneath, beneath his pillow, you know what they saw? A book. That means even in his last few moments, he was having the desire to learn. He was enthralled about knowledge. And therefore, they saw a book under his pillow, even though he was breathing his final few moments. How many of you have heard of Tahir al-Qadim? Muhammad Tahir al-Qadim. Very renowned uh, Sunni scholar in Pakistan. Yes, very renowned. And for those who watch QTV and yes. Airy TV, right? Yeah. ARY. 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 So he says if knowledge is not put into practice, mm. this is very important. Mm. When you gain knowledge, you need to apply that knowledge. Mm. If knowledge is not put into practice, mm. then there is no use of that knowledge. Sure. So you have to apply what you like. When you come for this family retreat, when you hear Madam Fatima, when you hear Chef Jihad, you should implement what they say. You should always say, okay, this is a very interesting trip. I enjoyed the pool, the wonderful rooms. Okay, that's it. I forget everything. No, no, no. Implement what you learn. But that knowledge needs to give you character. It needs to build your character. Bruce Lee. Who's Bruce Lee? Was he Chinese or Japanese? Mamuli's brother. That was a very nice job. <laughs> please share, please share. Huh? Please, please share. The job? Yes. Uh, share. No, 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 I can't remember. I just remember Mahuli and Bruce <laughs> And Bruce is vegetarian, brother? Broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen her before. <laughs> so Bruce Lee said, no, says knowledge will give you power, but character respect. Wow. Wow. From Bruce Lee. Power. But character will give you respect. So how do you use the knowledge? Now some of you say, no, no, I'm knowledgeable and that's it. You know, I don't need, you know, I've gone to Hausa, for example. I have, you know, studied. So I don't need, I don't need to implement the knowledge. I need no character. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, he was walking with Kumail ibn Ziyad. You know who Kumail ibn Ziyad is? Mm. Who is Kumail ibn Ziyad? Companion? One of the, I would say, top ten best companions of Imam Ali, along with Amar ibn Yasir. Bilal was a great companion. 
Abu Dhar al-Ghaffari, Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr, the son of Abu Bakr, a great companion. So Kumail ibn Ziyad and Imam Ali, they were walking. And suddenly Kumail ibn Ziyad heard someone reciting Quran. And it was the best Quran you have ever heard. So Kumail was like, Subhanallah, this man, amazing. Imam Ali looked towards Kumail and said, I will remind you about this Quran reader one day. I will remind you. So Kumail must be like, you know, I'll meet him at, for example, the mosque. Or maybe he will join forces with us. The battle of Nahrawan occurred. Imam Ali versus the? The Khawarij. The Khawarij. I say the first of ISIS were Khawarij. They were the first of ISIS. When you see these brutalities and atrocities happening around the world, where did it originate from? Khawarij. They killed pregnant women, right? They conducted rapes, etc. Worst human beings fought against Ali. Imam Ali annihilated and exterminated them. They deserved to. They came to fight the Imam. They came to kill the Imam. The imam was ready. Imam called Kumail. said, Kumail, come here. You see that man right there who is dying? Kumail said, no, I don't know him. Who is he? He said, you can't identify him. He said, no. He said, remember we were passing by someone's house and you heard the most beautiful Quran being recited? Kumail said, yes, I remember. He said, that's the man. He came to fight me. So sometimes even if you read the Quran, even if you know a lot about religion, but what's the point of knowing a lot about religion if you can't follow the principles of the Ahlul Bayt? Now someone may say, oh Ijaz, now you are... I fully follow Ali ibn Abi Talib. Let me ask you, as Madam Fatima said, when was the last time you visited an orphan? Subhanallah. If someone comes to you for help, would you give that person help? Are you envious of another human being? Do you assume about other people? Do you gossip? Gossip is killing our community. You'll see WhatsApp, you know, messages. It's better to leave this group sometimes. It's better to not communicate with such people. So Therefore, number one, what was number one? <laughs> Yalla. Seek knowledge. Seek knowledge. Ahsan, salu ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. I had four, but they are not so long. So number two, I talked about it yesterday, and we have heard uh, a significant amount of content on this subject matter. Connect with others, build friendships. Uh, you need to have genuine friends, true friends, people who are there to support you. Now, a lot of teenagers in this day and age complain that I have a problem, negative friends. How many of you here are influenced or have been influenced in the past by negative friends? Raise your hand. Or you have ever felt hurt from a friend, you ever felt deceived yes, or betrayed? I think we all, I, maybe, maybe an angel. Until now, by the way. <laughs> All of us. Now, Imam Sadiq knew we will encounter this situation. So he gives us a solution. Our Imam, whenever they give messages, they are timeless. They are, impl they are supposed to be implemented during that time and in the 21st century. Imam Sadiq says in Biharul Anwar by Allama, Bakr, this crowd is very knowledgeable, mashallah. <laughs> Normally, if I ask this question, how many times have I quoted Allah Muhammad? So many times. But whenever I ask Biharul Anwar, who has you know, compiled me, suddenly everyone is quiet. They just wrote. Allama Bakar Majlis. Volume 74, page, by the way, there are 110 volumes of Biharul Anwar. Volume 74, page 187. He says, try attaining true friends. So someone said, Imam, true friends, how? How do we measure? What's the yardstick? What's the benchmark of knowing a true friend? The Imam says that they are there when you are struggling and they are there when you are succeeding. They support you during your welfare and they are there when you have encountered misfortunes. If you see a friend bringing you down, why are you doing this work? Quit. Leave it. It won't help you. Avoid that friend. Straight away block him. Block her or on WhatsApp. Or if they say, or if they say, Jazz, you know, you've lost, for example, example, you've lost a lot of money. I told you you are a failure. He's not a true friend. So that's number two. What's number two? Connect with the right people, true friends. Number three, Madam mentioned it as well. Give yourself time to relax. Come to Verde, <laughs> relax. Find places in Dar where you'd like to go. Give yourself time to relax. Repeat after me. Give yourself time to relax. You may enjoy swimming like me. So that's your relaxation time. You may enjoy reading a book. 
you can read marketing for an African powerhouse. Right? So, that's number three. <laughs> or you can listen to Chef Jihad's lecture. That can be your relaxation time. And you learn something from him. Number four. What was number three? Relax. Take time to relax. Number four. Make time for self-reflection. Reflect. Think about yourself. Because self-reflection will lead to self-improvement and self-development. Surah Bariya, chapter? Surah Bariya, Surah Bariya. Is it 74? No, but you, it's good that you, you got one wrong. I said, Mr. Piasem, eh? Oh. <laughs> Anybody can someone? 51. Verse number 21. Surah Bariyat. It says, Wafi and Fusikum Afala In your own souls will you then not see. That means that soul of yours is capable of making you understand the light of Allah. You can find God within you. My uncle always says, Mr. Mustafa Panju. He always says he learns from he does his pranic healing and all. So he says that there is God within you. I never understood him until I read this verse. And you can find God within you. The light of God lies within you. The Quran has reproached those who do not endeavor for self-awareness. There is a book. I'd like to recommend this book to all of you. By Ayatollah Muhammad Taqi Misbah Yazdi. The book's title, Self-Recognition for Self-Improvement. Rasulullah says, Whoever does not recognize himself does not recognize Allah. If you don't understand your passion, Right? If you don't understand what you like, you will never understand the Lord. Therefore, I'll end with these two quotes, if you, if you permit me. Please. Do you? Please. Imam Ali says it's Mustadrak al wasai Volume 2, page 1, 310. A lot of people ask me, in a positive way, some people in a negative way. It's just why you always quote. You always provide references. Of course. I say, number one, it provides more authenticity. You know that it's coming from a source. Number two, you can go check it up. Right? You can go check it up and remind yourself. The teacher always says in the class, open page 24 in your textbook. Or the teacher can just teach normally. But he says, no, you go home and read. Right? So can, what I Ali says, can I share something with you? Please, please. My brother's teacher once told me, open your maths book to that page and to that particular formula. So he opened, he said, he said sir, the page is missing. He said, impossible. What do you mean the page is missing? It's printed by the government. He said, yes, I just, I just fed it to the goat next door. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> no joke. Lesson, moral lesson from that. Oh, well, well. Don't feed the goat. You Don't know. feed the goat <laughs> any books, right? So Imam Ali says, the more the man gains knowledge, so the more you seek to develop, self-develop, the more he endeavors for himself and strives in the way of the educated and reformed. Quran, I'll end with this. I started my talk with what? A quote from the Quran. I end with the words of the Quran. Very important. All of you who are present here, including myself, do you think your hearts are locked or not? Yes. Now, how do you open your hearts? How do you unlock your hearts? Surah 47, Muhammad, or Muhammad, or Allah, 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 Seek knowledge. Number two? Friends. Good friends. Good friends. Number three? Yeah. Sorry, relax. relax. Number four? Congratulations. This crowd is amazing because I had forgotten all the four points. <laughs> but I had to turn the page. <laughs> if there are any questions? Before, Imam Ali says in Nahjul Balagha, page 619, if you do not know an answer, don't be shy of saying I do not know. That's very important. So I, before I start any program, I always say, look, you can ask me questions on Islam, but please don't ask me fifty questions. Uh, if I may add also, <laughs> Imam Ali said, uh, half of knowledge is asking. Uh, 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 so if there are any questions, please. Now before that, can we give both speakers a very loud nari salawat? Wow. wow.
اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد